For the latest in our series of real-world product reviews, we've come to sunny California with the Sony A6000 to shoot with adventure photographer Chris Burkhardt. Over the next few days, we'll take in some beautiful scenery, shoot some surfers on the St. Louis Obispo coast, and see what this small, lightweight camera is capable of. Pismo Beach, California. What colors the sea around here? It ranges, you know, from a from a you know deep blue in the morning to a to a really green backlit in the afternoon. You know, they call it the green room for a reason, right? Because you get this beautiful. Is green that what they light. call it? Yeah, yeah. Like when you're inside the. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. So. I never knew what that meant. Yeah. Raised here in St. Louis Obispo, Chris Burkhardt is California born and bred. Chris has made a name for himself photographing in some of the world's most beautiful and remote places, sharing his work on social media to a global audience of aspiring photographers. Along the way, he's picked up countless high-profile commissions from some of the world's biggest lifestyle brands. Chris got his start photographing surfers on this very coast, so that's where we're starting too. When you do this, are you shooting JPEG or RAW or mixture? I'm always shooting RAW. One thing too that you will find it's kind of a, a, a trick of the trade when it comes to shooting um, anything ocean related is we put our white balance on cloudy. Okay. And, that, and I mean obviously you can change all that in post, it's no big, no big deal. It helps to uh, just warm up the scene, you know? You're a back button focus kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, I'm aren't always you? back button focusing. So what I've done is I've taken my focus off this completely. Uh -huh. I can tack my focus in there and then I can fire away, you Sweet. know, or so on. We're shooting APS-C sensors. So the APS-C sensor everything's a little more in focus, you know? Mm. I mean, it it's just brings it all together, you know, and just because you have that. Yeah, you've got more of a margin for slight focus yeah. error anyway. And, and I think it's, it's bright and it's sunny, and you know, we're probably shooting around like F5.6 to like F11. Yeah, so, I'm at F8 right now. Yeah, exactly. The Sony a6000 is a highly compact, enthusiast-focused mirrorless camera, which replaces the NEX6 in Sony's APS-C format mirrorless lineup. Featuring a high-resolution 24-megapixel sensor and impressively broad feature set, the camera's standout feature is its hybrid autofocus system, which enables highly accurate subject tracking at very high frame rates. To shoot surfers, we're using Sony's new 70-200mm f4 FE zoom, which is equivalent to 105-300mm to zoom on the A6000's crop sensor. It is an APS-C sensor, so this camera is really not what I'm going to bring out to shoot, you know, really shallow depth portraits. It's not what I'm going to bring out to shoot uh, long exposure or high ISO. Right. I think where this camera really performs well is when you have a, a, enough light, sunset, sunrise, it's got an amazing dynamic range. When I can put the ISO 400 and below, you can really pull a lot out of this. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. So as you see how the surfer comes up right there uh -huh. and he kind of hits the top of the wave, you see like the nose of his board, like oh, that's, nice. a, that's a great moment. Just now this spray is, comes up. it's a little more pulled back than I, I'd want. So as I move back, I probably, I might put on my other lens, Yeah. you know? Um, I'm assuming I'm gonna be cropping some of mine. <laughs> that's fine though, I mean, the beauty is that you have 24 megapixels. Yeah, there's enough resolution. And you're shooting so. ISO 100, these things are, are, you know, they crop beautifully. Oh, that's a great shot. So that guy was in the green room. He was definitely trying to check into the green room for a second. But he didn't. He wiped out he of the kind green room. Of, he kind he got of, thrown out he of the green room. Like, he might have told his friends later at the bar, like, yeah, I was in the green room, but The bounce from the green room yeah. threw him out. So, Chris, you're a, you're a known name. When we just came from breakfast and everyone in the cafe seemed to know who you were, and half of them follow you on Instagram. <laughs> How do you get people to notice? The key is getting these photographs to see the light of day, getting them out there. And I've really tried to pump a lot of really good imagery through my Facebook, you know, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. And, and what I found is that some of my biggest and best clients have all come to me through that. So Chris, you brought us to the second amazing location today, yep, yep. up on a hill. I mean, where are we exactly? We are basically on a little ridge line between uh, Avalo Beach and San Luis Obispo. We're just like kind of looking at 360 degrees sweeping view of the central coast here. We were hoping to get a really amazing sunset tonight, but there's no cloud, so that's kind of, uh, that idea is sort of gone. But what I want to get is some um, high dynamic range right. stuff to show what the sensor yep. can really do. Totally. Does it sound good? I think so, yeah. Right there's perfect. One thing I've actually been really impressed by is the fact that even in this very dim, quite low contrast light after the sun has gone down, 
the focus system of this thing is, is, is really still keeping up. It's still really positive in acquiring the subjects and sticking with it. Well, this is a pretty place. It's going to be difficult to get back to Seattle after this. People ask me like, oh, what's the, one of the most important things for young photographers? And I tell them like, you know, lose this idea that you need to be the best at everything. Like, when you put a portfolio out there, don't try to include everything because you want an editor to see that and be like, oh, well, they can shoot this and this and this. Nobody cares that you can do everything average. They want to know what you're the specialist at. You know, what's your niche? And so, I knew what my niche was, and I really pushed towards that. And although I work on every other aspect of photography personally. I really try to hone in on the fact that I want to marry big landscapes with subjects, I want to be shooting in the water, I want to have strong use of light and silhouettes and, and that was really how I built my career and I think that it's such an important thing to kind of have that realization of like what is your style, you know, what are you trying to say through your work. After a busy day on the beach, we headed to the St. Louis Obispo Farmers Market to test the A6000's low light capabilities and to find some food. Although the challenges of shooting in this kind of situation are very different to photographing the surfers earlier on, I was impressed at how positive the A6000's autofocus is, even in very low light. Image quality from the Sony's 24 megapixel sensor is excellent too, right up to the top of its ISO sensitivity scale. I was less impressed by the St. Louis Obispo gumball. I think they're unpleasant and they smell. You don't want to like a... No, no. <laughs> we have one of these in Seattle too and it's equally as unpleasant. Hang on, stay there and take a picture of you in front of the gum wall. This is one of my favorite little pieces, this uh, adapter, like the fisheye and 16 mil, because it's so small. The next morning, we woke up to a beautiful sunrise and headed back to Pismo Beach to get a different perspective on the surfers that are already heading out into the sea. As well as fast frame rate still images, I also want to shoot some 60p video this morning and try out the A6000's Movie Servo AF. This is the classic, classic Central Coast sunrise shot right here to me. Like, you have the pier, you've got the sun, it's making a beautiful star because I'm shooting at f16. This is my weapon of choice this morning, 70 to 200 f4. So I can really test the phase detection autofocus because these guys are coming in quick and they're close enough to us, I think, to really give the predictive tracking a bit of a run out. So I'm going to give that a go and see how it gets on. As well as fast frame rate still images, I also want to shoot some 60p video this morning and try out the A6000's Movie Servo AF. Oh wow, that was gnarly. We shot a ton of stuff, we've been here about two hours, the sun's fully up now. Yep, yep. We shot surfers going one way, going the other way, going towards us, going away from us. We've got fast frame rate stuff, tracking, and we shot yeah. some 60p video too with exactly. the movie tracking AF, so we're gonna see if we can slow that down and get yeah. some nice slow-mo out of it. Yep. Did things get gnarly, just so I can things check? Things got a little gnarly. They, how, they, do I, how, would I know, how do I know when they were gnarly? Well, you know, there's definitely a gnarly sensor on the camera, so you're gonna have to check in. Oh, that, that was what that was? Yeah, that's an app. One of the things we love to do when the surf is kind of like on the small, smaller side is grab a jet ski and we basically whip into some waves and it just gives you an awesome opportunity to like shoot some really fast action. Nice. Things are moving really quickly and so we're gonna really test the autofocus of this camera today. It's gonna really put it to the test. All right, yeah. It's already getting nice and warm. I've shed three layers already. I know, I know. It's gonna get hot today, so <laughs> we're excited. This is a British man. This is the nearest you'll ever come to seeing me naked. There's a lot of white here. There's a lot of white Shut going up. on. Shut up. This. So typically what they'll do is they'll go wait for that set, the set wave to come in, which is yeah. like the biggest one. And they kind of race down the line and, and the jet ski, all it does is it gets him enough speed to get up yeah. and then he starts to go on his own. You and then know? he drops the yeah, thing, exactly. yeah. It's kind of cool, I love that there's a little guy 
looking at him in the foreground, it's a rad moment. Are you continuing focusing in this? Yeah, just... typically, because cause they're coming such a distance that I just got it on, um, I got it on like focus tracking, and I'm just pushing the button, my back button, following them down the line, and it's working really well because there's so much contrast right now, you know? You know, any camera is going to really perform better with, with, um, with kind of contrasting conditions, and that's exactly what we have, but what I love about this camera here is that they're really going fast, and so because of that, we have like, we're nailing it. Oh! Nice. Even until quite recently, you had a choice of either big and heavy and, and really, really, really good, or small and light, and then not great, especially when it comes to focusing. So I'm putting on my uh, LEA4 adapter with my 100 to 400. So now, I can get a little more compressed view of what's going on out there. Oh, too bad. All right, Chris, how'd you feel that went? That was awesome, man. It was a beautiful day and a lot of editing to do, but I think that we're yes. gonna plot some gems and, <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's kind of the fun part, you know, just pushing that button on the trigger and feeling 11 frames per second burst through, you know, it's awesome. This A6000 body is one of my favorite pieces on the road. I, I don't travel anywhere without it. Even if I'm bringing my A7s, my A7S, you know, my, my A99, I still never leave home without my A6000 because it's light, it's compact. The, the cost versus value of the camera is amazing. You could essentially get the camera, a water housing, and a lens for under $1,000. For entry level people wanting to shoot action sports, that's something that's really unique. All right, so Chris is out in the water now. He's got the A6000 in waterproof housing. He's just photographing some waves as they're tubing over some surface. So while he's doing that, we're going to go and set up a sunset shot. It's in about 15, 25 minutes, we're probably going to get a really nice uh, sunset right here over the pier. So we're going to go and do that. We'll check him with Chris once he's back out of the water. I am going to underexpose it by three stops, two stops, and one stop to really see what the sensor can actually do in terms of dynamic range. Pretty much just exposure bracketing here, really. So there's still plenty of light. I'm not worried about the shutter speed. And basically what that's going to allow me to do, hopefully, is pull out a lot of the detail in the shadows which are underexposed, and I'm going to retain the highlight detail and the highlight switch of what the camera is metering for when I underexpose it. One frustration uh, is that Sony took out a feature which I used to really like a lot in the NEX6. They took out the, the viewfinder virtual horizon, so I'm guessing the horizon, but uh, hopefully the 24 megapixels is enough room to crop. Now, Chris, you're colder and wetter now than you were last time I saw you. <laughs> a little so bit. You've just come out of the water, the sun's just gone down. Mm -hmm. How'd you get on with this? One thing that's fun about being in the water is you're really, you're not even really seeing what you're shooting most of the time because you're diving under the wave, flopping around, looking like a dead seal, and it's kind of more of a, a, an exercise. Oh, that one's really cool too, wow. So what sort of settings are you using when you're doing this? If I'm gonna be in some really heavy surf and I don't really wanna be fiddling with my camera, I'll put it to shutter speed priority. Mm -hmm. Um, eight hundredth of a second or a thousandth of a second and just let it go, you know? Auto maybe, ISO, auto aperture. Yeah, no, usually like ISO 100, 200. Okay. For this shot, I bumped up the f-stop, you know, like f-22 mm -hmm. to get like that star reflection yeah. coming through the pier, which is really cool. So I've been using the A6000 for a few days now. It's not a camera I used a huge amount before coming out on this trip. I've used the NEX6, its predecessor, quite a lot. And the reason Chris likes these things is the same reason I've come to like this over the past few days. The camera itself is very, very, very small. It's very, very light, but it has a nice big APS-C sensor in there. The image quality from the sensor, Sony 24 megapixel sensor, it's got beautiful dynamic range. It's capable of great resolution. And some of the lenses, I mean, the lenses range from obviously cheap and cheerful, but then there's the really high-end stuff like the Zeiss lenses we've mostly been using for this shoot, which are just superb. And they're so small. I mean, this is equivalent to a 24 to 105 zoom, I think, something like that. I think the only advice I'd give someone who was traveling with these things is just to bring a lot of batteries because they do eat through them, especially if you're shooting video. But then again, you know, the batteries are nice and small and light too, so that's not a huge weight penalty either. Absolutely superb piece of kit, and it's been so much fun using it this week. All right, Chris, so we've both been using this alongside each other for a, yep. uh, a little while now. I mean, bottom line, what are your pros and cons? Action sports is where this thing really yeah. performs. I mean, it is fast, it is super tech sharp. I have yet to see another camera on the market that can, that can match and beat 
the the quickness and autofocus, mm -hmm. and basically the reliability of the autofocus system. So that's a huge pro for me too. I mean, in our yeah. testing, this is one of the best, if not the best, cameras of its class when it comes to actually predictively tracking. Right. I mean, right. a couple of years ago, you had a choice of if you're doing predictive tracking stuff, action stuff, yeah. go and buy a DSLR. I'm sorry, right. it's a heavy piece of gear. Yeah. Or if you want compact and light and travel, you know, mm -hmm. a good travel companion, you go mirrorless. Yep. But this actually has one of the best focusing systems in it. The fact that you know we're able to you know operate so much faster because we yeah. have we have a direct reflection of what we're seeing. F-stop, aperture, shutter speed, white balance is all being directed onto the sensor, and I feel like that is its best function. The only other thing that I feel like is is still kind of tricky is just it's not a con so much as it's just a personal preference, but kind of learning to use the menu, learning to use the buttons. But at the same time, that's because it's so small. You know, you kind of have to love and hate that about it that all the buttons and dials can be a little tricky to get used to but once you do it can be nice and i think it's all about how you set your camera up well chris it's been three busy days we've shot a yes. lot of surfing yeah you know, we've seen jet skis we've been out in this beautiful landscape here in central california yep. and thank you so much no worries absolutely a pleasure i'm stoked to have you and excited to to kind of see what we got so. yeah i think i think we've got some nice images yeah. i've been going through mine at night on the camera you've been chimping all the whole time <laughs> yeah. i've been seeing you so cool well, thank Thanks you that was fun yeah appreciate it